Hello and welcome to Sandout's Heroes of the Grid Showcase. This is the series chronicling all the characters found within the Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid tabletop game by Renegade Studios. I want to go into every ranger and villain within every expansion box and tell all of you my personal experiences as well as the strategies I think is best when using these characters. So without further ado, let's begin. Today on episode 2, we'll be looking at the Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid, the Kickstarter Phase 1 Exclusives Box. This thing's got a lot in it, so we got a lot to get into. Let's begin. Power Rangers! So the Kickstarter Phase 1 Exclusives all came in a nice deluxe storage box. And what makes this deluxe is the fact it has full color artwork on all sides. Here we have Primator turning into a Ranger 2. Here we also have Primator at the uh, industrial plant, power plant. Here we have Robogoat kicking Zack in the head. And then here we have the pumpkin wrapper uh, at the construction yard, which is pretty awesome. On the top, we got this nice panel of Goldar uh, with nice laser eye beams and such. And it's really cool. I love how the logo is very small down here. So it still tells you this is Heroes of the Grid. There's a Renegade logo in the corner, but it's not something, you know, for retail. So it doesn't have to be super advertised. Lifting up the lid, we can see on the inside, we have Eye Guy, as well as Rebel Ranger Slayer at the shopping mall, the Armored Red Ranger, as well as the Green Ranger blasting a Z Putty, uh, which is pretty cool. And then, shake this all up on the bottom, as things fall off the top, there is Rita and her monsters, which looks pretty dang cool. So in addition to all the newness you get in the Kickstarter box, you also get six additional putties and six additional super putties. These do nothing to change the game, it's just more when you have more rangers going on. Yeah, sometimes you need a few extra putties. Also to that point, you get extra tokens. And these tokens are pretty neat. Uh, the reason this is here is because this is your standard energy token for the game. This is the Kickstarter bundle exclusive plastic version. Uh, I really like these plastic tokens, they're really easy to use. I'll typically use these for energy as lives in the command center uh, for the ranger lives, but I'll use these for rangers. People passing them back and forth a lot easier with the plastic tokens, which have nice uh, flat backs. And then as well, we have a plastic lead ranger token that's much larger than the one from the base game. And I really like this thing because you can just kind of toss it and be like, yep, you're the lead ranger here, um, which works really well for gameplay. It's morphin time! As always, we're starting with the Ranger Miniatures. Now, there's five Rangers in the Kickstarter box, which, no, I don't know why my voice pitched up higher then. We're just gonna roll with it. But these five Rangers are quite uh, interesting, because one of them isn't a Ranger, and one of them technically isn't its own playable character. So, let's take a look. First up, let's take a look at Mr. Elephant in the Room, Armored Red Ranger, the Dragon-Shielded Mighty Morphin Red. Very, very nice looking miniature. He's got, you know, of course, the sword plus the dagger, uh, so he's got power sword, dragon dagger, really nice details. Now what's interesting about him is he works as a power up and we'll go over that in his section. Then we have the rebel ranger slayer. Now this is ranger slayer in her civilian form with her bow because this is the uh, basically supposed to represent the purified Kimberly from Lord Dragon's universe. And it's really cool. It's kind of nice to have a, a civilian ranger like this though. A little bit more difficult to paint because you got to worry about, you know, human bits, not just ranger bits. Next up is Mighty Morphin Green. This is the first release of Mighty Morphin Green. There is a second version included in the Tommy Oliver pack that's coming in phase two of the game. And that version, eh, we'll see how that turns out. But this is a standard kind of Green Ranger pose, Dragon Dagger, all kind of cool stuff. Then White Ranger, same deal. There's a version of this coming with the Tommy Oliver pack as well, which is good because I think these are the two most popular Rangers uh, in the, in the in the Kickstarter, um, for sure. I think that the Rebel Ranger Slayer is a good fan pick. Armored Red's not really its own full character. And then we have Alpha. Alpha's a support unit. He was a perk that was included with all pledged tiers of the Kickstarter that included items. And Alpha works as an AI support or a player support, uh, which we'll get into in his segment. But he's really cool, he's really nice. I like how he's smaller than the Rangers. It's kind of neat, um, and he is grayscale, since he is in a specific ranger color. Before we begin with the rangers themselves, let's talk about the bonus cards. Now what I call bonus cards are essentially the, the 11 character cards before you. These are all normal character cards, just like usual, 
But these have special 90s retro art. This is stuff that you would see on older comics, or at least in that style. The effects are the exact same as the Rangers themselves. They just have some different artwork. So it's a good little variety for people out there that want to do that. You get tarot sleeves that are sturdy enough, you could probably put these as a reverse side to your main Rangers. But this is kind of a neat little bonus. I think this is great for something like Kickstarter. Doesn't change the game, just gives it a little bit of a different look. What does change the game would be these other cards. We have four cards here. One for Rocky, Adam, Aisha, and Cat. Now basically how this works is that Rocky is the Mighty Morphin Red Ranger. So he will use the same deck. This is that card got away. Same deck as Jason, same Zord, and the same figure as Jason. And instead, we'll use this character card instead of Jason's, which is pretty cool. So Rocky's effect, Bravery. When you reveal a card for defense, if that card be placed on the bottom of your deck, you may add it to your hand instead. It's a good idea to think about who you're fighting and how many people you got before picking your effects. Adam, Adaptable. Once per battle, you may swap a card from your hand with the top card of your discard pile. Aisha Campbell, Momentum. Once per battle, after you defeat an enemy card with an attack, gain one energy. Super handy, because a lot of Trini cards that Aisha uses are very much de defeating enemies that get you stuff. And Cat Hellard, Mighty Morphin Pink, Agile. When you suffer damage before re revealing a card for defense, you may look at the top two cards of your deck and put them back in any order. That way you can protect yourself. So Cat's really good at defense, Aisha's good at defeating things, Adam's pretty good at just kind of working your, your defense bracket, and Rocky's pretty good at uh, keeping himself alive. So really cool, changes up the game, gives you some new strategies, and yeah, it just uses the same figures from the base game, the same decks from the base game, and of course the same Zord cards. Uh, nothing of that changes, but it's kind of nice to have the other rangers represented. Dragon Zord power! So first up we have Mighty Morphin Red Dragon Shield. Now this is the most interesting character I think we'll look at in these videos because it doesn't follow the traditional setup. For example, he only comes with a character card as well as two combat cards. And yes, I'm leaving my combat card sleeve this time. Same with my character cards. I just really don't feel like unsleeving and resleeving everything during each video. Just know, they don't come with sleeves, but I sleeve them because I wanted to. Okay. So basically what we need to do is inherit a bunch of stuff from Mighty Morphin Red from the base game. That being the 10 combat card deck, as well as the Zord card. This replaces Jason's character card and provides the effect Legacy of the Dragon. During setup, add the Dragon Shield Mighty Morphin Red and Dragon Dagger Mighty Morphin Red cards to your starting hand. This does not mean your deck, but basically use the same 10 cards that uh, Jason has from the base game. We get to add these into the mix, but they go straight to your hand, which is really handy. Dragon Shield is a one cost reaction card. Play this card when any ranger suffers damage to reduce that damage by three. Next time you perform attack during this battle, add one die to the attack. It's very similar to a lot of different Jason cards and works with that leadership. Then Dragon Dagger is a three energy cost, three dice attack, perform this attack twice. Pretty straightforward. So he gets two extra cards, which also means he has more health than other rangers because he's got 12 cards in total instead of just 10. So that's actually really handy. But again, it's a nice little Kickstarter bonus, kind of mix up the gameplay a little bit, but not like an entirely new character that has its own set of rules. Tiger Zord. Switching gears completely to a brand new character, we have the Mighty Morphin White Ranger. Tommy's deck is full of powerful moves with low energy cost and high dice attacks. His shields are lower, so taking large damage numbers is ill-advised. Yes, Tommy here doesn't take too much damage, but he's pretty good at dishing it out. First things first, character card. Once per battle, when any ranger reveals a card for defense, you may add one shield to that card, helping out his fellow rangers, pretty nice. And the Tiger Zord, or the White Tiger Zord, Exhaust this card when any ranger performs a maneuver to allow another ranger to immediately play one card at an energy cost of zero. So time that with your team to make sure you get extra stuff going. Now getting to the combat card, you're going to notice something's missing. Uh, there was a printing error with the Kickstarter boxes that resulted in no shields on any of the Tommy cards. There is a guide, I'll post a little uh, screenshot up here so you can kind of see it if you need it. Um, but he does not have the energy shields on there but they said there are replacements coming eventually. Uh, they're just waiting for them to be produced. So we have a two, two copies of the Flying Tiger, zero energy cost, attack of two dice. After you resolve this attack, you may spend one energy to allow another ranger to immediately play one card, an energy cost of zero. So a lot of it is spend some energy, let your fellow rangers play another card, which is pretty cool. Uh, it works with Tommy's leadership uh, from being the White Ranger. So two cards of Flash Kick, zero energy cost, reaction. 
Play this card at the start of each the start of a battle to roll two dice and deal that much damage to an enemy card of your choice. Really cool because you get to use this before any rangers do any attacks. Works as an additional thing because it's at the start of the battle, so it doesn't suck up your ranger turn one card. One energy cost, fainting slash, two copies of this. Three dice attack. If you roll any missed results during this attack, return this card to your hand instead of discarding it. This is really nice because a lot of times when you're rolling three dice, you're all end up going to hit a miss at least once. So it's nice that this gets to come to your hand, no problem. Then we have two copies of Guardian Armor, zero energy cost, Maneuver. Gain two energy, place this card on top of your deck instead of discarding it. This is really good when you're going up against a monster and you know that there's damage coming and you're not going to be able to defeat it. Put this out, get some energy, place it on top of your deck instead of discarding it. That way you know how many shields there are when there's shields there. You know, that's, that's the other part of that. He has a two energy cost card, which we haven't seen yet in these videos, uh, which is Saba's Eye Beams. To maneuver, deal one damage each, up to four enemy cards. This is kind of like the Megazord effect, except, you know, you can use it on a specific turn, but that could really be handy. You could kill out multiple enemies that way. Um, so that's always a good card to tell your teammates you have, because that could finish things off. And then the three energy cost, Saba Slash, is a five dice attack. You may divide this attack you may divide this damage among any number of targets. Pretty handy, works like the Blade Blaster. But you'll notice he doesn't come with a Blade Blaster, which is pretty nice, because he never had one. So it's not just like every Ranger has a Blade Blaster kind of thing. Dragon Sword! So Mighty Morphin Green, on the other hand, is not a very good leader, and is actually a better loner. Tommy's deck is most effective when he works alone. While he is effective in a team with higher dice rolls, he's also good at clearing enemies out on his own. I think really one of the things to do with Tommy is to kind of send him out to kind of clear the board and try to avoid panic. Because that's really where his strengths lie. For example, his effect loner, if you're the only player with a ranger in a location, you may add one dice to each of your attacks. That really helps him clear putties and such. And it kind of plays to the fact that Tommy was a loner when he was the green ranger. Dragon Zord, exhaust this card when you defeat an enemy card with an attack to deal excess damage from that attack to another enemy card of your choice. Really, really handy, because that can kind of help him again, clear some enemies. Blade Blaster, now in green. Yes, he has a Blade Blaster. Yes, he stole one one time. Yes, that's the reason it's there. Solo Strike, zero cost, two dice attack. He may reroll any number of dice during this deck. See, he doesn't even need help to reroll dice. He really works well on his own. It's kind of amazing. Dagger Solo, one energy cost, maneuver. For the rest of the battle, the energy cost of all combat cards is reduced by one. Throw that out at the beginning and you can have yourself a nice little solo battle. Dragon Shield, one, reaction. Play this card when any ranger suffers damage, reduce that damage by three. Next time you perform an attack during this battle, add one dice to the attack. It says when any ranger suffers damage, which means green ranger can fight alone and reduce his damage. It's kind of like he absorbs a lot of the effects that the individual rangers have that they could use for each other. Dragon Rush, one energy cost, one dice attack. After you resolve this attack, you may perform a second attack with two dice. So it's essentially one dice attack, and then followed up with a two dice, which is really handy. And is level three, Dragon Dagger. Attack three dice, perform this attack twice. The uh, Armored Red Ranger Dragon Dagger and the Armored Red Ranger Dragon Shield have the same effects as these, they're just with different art specifically for Armored Red. So, pretty nice. I really do think Tommy is a solid character, and it should be interesting to see how the variation is when he is in the Tommy uh, Oliver pack. So here we move on to the Rebel Ranger Slayer from Lord Dragon's World of the Coinless. Rebel Kim's deck is perfect for finishing enemies with roller damage as well as being able to ignore guard traits. She has the ability to augment her attacks with additional dice, making her a great team player, but also good at solo combat. So yes, Rebel Kim can work with a team, despite not having one of her own, at least in this game. Kimberly Ann Hart, Rebel Ranger Slayer, finishing shot. After the last enemy card in the combat sequence resolves, deal one damage to an enemy card of your choice. This can really work out, you may want to leave an enemy with one damage left after they've resolved, and then at the end of the battle, boom, you can defeat them. Pretty handy. Her Grave Zord is probably my favorite Zord card of the whole game. Not only for the design, but also exhaust this card to use the ability of another Zord that has been summoned. This is really handy because sometimes you really want to use a second effect, especially like Mastodons to remove a foot soldier. So Grave Zord can be really handy for that. Blade Blaster, now in pink, but with the words Rebel Ranger Slayer on them. All right, first up, Scorn Shot. Two of these, zero energy cost, reaction. Play this card after an enemy card resolves to roll two dice and deal that much damage to an enemy card. Pretty nice, because that means sometimes you may not be able to defeat a card before it activates. 
there's a chance to do it. Terror Kick, two of these, zero energy cost. Attack, two dice. After you resolve this attack, if the target was not defeated, return this card to your hand instead of discarding it. Super handy to have as a backup. Veteran Instincts, two of these, zero energy cost, maneuver. Gain one energy, you may drop to two cards, then immediately play another card. Super handy, super, super handy. Piercing Shot, probably my favorite one of her cards. Love the artwork on it too. Attack, three dice. This attack defeats the target, deal any remaining damage from this attack to an enemy card adjacent to the target. Pretty cool. And Bow of Darkness, three energy cost, five damage attack. Ignore the guard keyword when choosing a target for this attack. Really nice. It kind of works off how uh, normal Kim has a five dice attack. This is just a straight five damage. That's kind of what Kim really plays as. So Rebel Ranger Slayer really plays as a more experienced, maybe a little bit stronger Kimberly. And that's really cool. She's completely different in terms of how you play as her, but very similar and kind of familiar in that way. Ay, 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 ay. And here we have the wild card, Alpha 5. Alpha's deck is entirely designed to assist the Rangers with energy gain and damage being taken. And what I mean by this is that Alpha is completely a support unit. He does not leave the command center, he does not fight, but he has his cards to help the Rangers. There's two modes, Loyal Robot and Supportive AI. There's a lot of text here, there's a lot of text on this rule card. I'll put the rule card up so you can read it. And I'll put the other rule card up for Loyal Robot so you can read it. Uh, same with the effects, if you want to read the official text, I'm going to be summarizing because it's going to take forever. So essentially, in Loyal Robot mode, Alpha is played by a, a character, uh, or by a player, I mean, and that player can choose to use their cards in place of the Ranger turns. A lot of them are maneuvers and reactions. Actually, all of them are maneuvers and reactions. So depending on what you need to do, you have that option. The supportive AI mode is a little bit more complicated, and I haven't been able to implement it into gameplay very well. And that's because what happens is when a Ranger chooses to recover, where they normally would recover six shields of cards, you could opt to recover two uh, shields instead, or no, opt to recover two less shields, and then that then get that many alpha cards. You could get one or two alpha cards, and that'll just be in your hand for you to use. So some of the cards we have is two of Energize, Maneuver, Gain, Three Energy, and by the way, you can't pick the alpha cards, they're supposed to be random. Um, emergency Shields, Reaction, play this card, many ranger suffers damage, reduce the damage by two. On a side note, if a player is playing as alpha, they have a limit of five cards per hand. Tactical support, maneuver, a ranger of your choice may drop to two cards and immediately play one card. This one's interesting because not many reactions have an energy cost uh, like this, but energy cost of one, reaction, play this card when another ranger plays a card to allow that ranger return that card to their hand instead of discarding it. So that actually can work out, you can basically spend an energy to keep a card. Go Go, reaction, play this card before another ranger performs an attack to add two dice to that attack. That's pretty handy and Teleport, which is three energy. Move one ranger from another location to this location. Uh, this is kind of interesting is that if he's in the command center, that means that this goes there. I don't know why I just didn't say command center, but if the ranger's using it, I think you could probably augment it to say, okay, well, you know, my buddy's over in the industrial district and I'm at the Angel Grove High School. I want him here. Let me spend the three energy to get him here. Uh, but it also could be handy because then you don't have to use move actions to power up at the command center. So Alpha's kind of a bit of a wild card, and I think I definitely want to do like a gameplay video on him specifically, because I think that more of this stuff makes more sense in motion. But overall, I think Alpha is a great support for the Rangers, if you can figure out how to use them. So moving on to Foot Soldiers, we have the Tango Warriors. Now the Tangas are probably my favorite Foot Soldier to fight against. Tango Warriors are cowards by nature. They flap about and can sometimes do minor damage, but the biggest thing to be concerned about is their fly away ability, which can cause panic across the city. So the game includes 18 Tango Warriors. Here they are. Really cool stuff. I love the way they look. I would actually really love to mass paint Tangas because I really love Tangas. They're probably one of my favorite foot soldier designs ever. So they're really awesome. I'm really impressed with this. We got two more locations, this being the shopping mall, the panic limit of four and its effect on the back for the hard mode. At the start of each battle in this location, the lead ranger deals one damage to an enemy card of their choice. Hey, malls are helpful. Keep them around, don't let them die. And the stone quarry, panic limit of seven, because of course you can fit more monsters in a stone quarry. At the start of each battle in this location, one ranger suffers two damage. Ouch, must be all those rocks causing trouble. So pretty cool, I like these two locations quite a bit. 
Of course, the Tengas do come with their deployment cards. There's 10 of them, some for stone quarry, some for shopping mall, all in different quantities. And then of course we have the 10 combat cards. So there's the Tango card art on the back. So first up, Deadly Talons. Deadly Talons, health of two, deal three damage to the Rangers. Not too bad, aside from that fast that makes the Rangers, the villains go first. But overall, pretty cool stuff. Next up, Fly Away. Fly Away is a health of three, and it's move one Tango from this location to the next clockwise that is not panicked. This always gets us in trouble because if we don't defeat this, they move one away, and oh no, now the location's panicked next to us. But sometimes it works out because we don't have to worry about defeating them. Uh, also, I really think this card should have been called Tenga Bye Bye. Just saying. Also, uh, two of Swarm Attack, health of three, deal one damage, increase this damage by one for each foot soldier in this location. That can get scary. Fly Away can actually help make that hurt less. Uh, Piercing Screech, guard. Each ranger must discard one card from their hand. That's a three health. So not too bad. It's definitely stuff to deal with. I put the Tengas in the easy category. <laughs> Next up, we have the Z Putty Patrollers, also known as the Z Putties. They're at the power plant in the dockyard. I put them as easy, because Z Putty Patrollers are stronger than normal putties, but aren't too fearsome on their own. Large groups will provide a challenge. Yeah, these guys aren't too, too bad to fight. Uh, of course, we got the 10 deployment cards, which look like that, power plant, dockyard, and such. And then, of course, we have the two locations. Dockyard, limit of five, looking real nice. The effect, at the start of each battle in this location, drain one energy. Ouch, that hurts that shared pool. Power plant, energy, or uh, panic limit of six on the back. At the start of each energy, a uh, start of each battle in this location, gain one energy. So you gain one energy here, and you lose one energy here. Kind of neat how those effects work in tandem. Here's the Z putty a often overlooked version of the putties, and I hope we get more figures of these in the future. I really like the look of these. I like how they have the giant blades, keeps them different from the other putties, so that people don't get too lost as to who is who. And I really do like that. Really nice work. Also, you get 18 of them. Uh, yes, that is, for these and the Tangas, you get 18 because it's 12, as what would normally be the base set, plus extra six because of stretch goals. Here's the combat deck, the Z Putty Patrollers on the back. Uh, two of Overwhelm, two health, fast, deal two damage, skip the next ranger battle in this turn. That can hurt, but not too bad overall. Self-destruct passive. When a when this card is in play, each time a Z Putty Patroller card, including this one, is defeated, deal two damage. That's kind of interesting. There's a little bit of blowback from those explosions happening. Uh, Z Shield, there's three of these. Guard, drain two energy. Uh, that's not too bad in the grand scheme of things. And then Fear Strike 3, deal 4 damage. That can hurt a little bit, but being 3 health, yeah, it's easy to take out. So that's the Z Putties. You fools! That's still no match for the Rod of Destruction! Moving on to the monsters in this box, there's quite a few, so I'm going to be really brief with these. And I hope you don't mind. If you have questions, please leave a comment. First up is Robogoat. Difficulty, medium. Warbogoat may seem intimidating, but he isn't too much to be worried about. His low health leaves him vulnerable to attacks. His attacks can be blocked by spinning energy, but his combos can be quite painful to rangers. Well, first things first, let's look at this beautiful Robogoat miniature. Really nice work. Really impressed overall. I really do like this guy quite a bit. Very, very nice work, and a lot of details that can be painted. Here's his deployment card. Robogoat on the front. Monster on the back. That's the only time I'm going to show Monster. Robogut's combat deck. We've got three of charging headbutt. Fast, deal four damage unless the ranger spins two energy to prevent it. Not too bad. Staff slam, three of those. Health of four. Guard, deal five damage to lead ranger. Ouch. And then cloven combo, which is health of five. And this is what I want to explain. What I've learned is that deal one damage, deal two damage, deal three damage is not some weird printing error. It means deal one damage to a ranger of the team's choice, deal two damage to a ranger of the team's choice, deal three damage to a ranger of the team's choice. Three separate attacks, but all landing right in a row. Robogoat can be easy to defeat if you know what you're doing, but be careful because he can hurt. He can hurt you. Feel the power from the sword of darkness! Ayah! Next up is the Evil Green Ranger. Now the Evil Green Ranger, of course, is Tommy when he was evil, that's why he's got the Sword of Darkness, plus the Dragon Dagger. Very nice, I do like how he's in gray scale so you don't mix him up with the playable Tommy. Which yes, you could have Tommy versus Evil Tommy. It's an option. Now of course, Evil Green Ranger was quite the foe in the show, and I'd list him as an evil hard difficulty because, holy crap. Uh, brainwashed by the evil reader Repulsa, Tommy Oliver's Green Ranger powers are being used for evil. 
Green Ranger not only uses dice to deal damage to Rangers, he has large damage attacks targeting the lead Ranger of the battle. Rangers need to choose carefully which of their team they want to be the target of Green Ranger's power. And I do mean that. This guy is actually evil hard. I've tried to defeat him once and did not succeed. Here's his deployment card. Here's his deck. I love that art. Dragon Rush. Roll six dice and deal that much damage to the lead ranger. Well, you're already dead. It's beatable, but man, that hurts. And roll two dice and deal that much damage to each other ranger. Yikes! The whole team gets taken out by this, but it's got a hell of a four. You should be able to knock it out. Dragon Dagger. Fast. Oh god, fast. Roll four dice and deal that much damage to two different rangers. Jeez, and there's three of these cards. You're definitely going to run into that. Sword of Darkness, health of six. Deal six damage to the lead ranger. Well, at least it's a set amount. And then lastly, Dragon Shield, health of six, passive. When this card is in play, each time a ranger deals damage to an evil green ranger card, including this one, deal two damage to that ranger. Yeah, that's just going to leave you in bad, bad states. Don't waste your time with this guy. Knock him out early if you can, and hopefully you all survive, because... Wow, what a powerhouse. Yes, oh nasty one. I'm working on a marvelous monster that eats cars and smells like a fish. Next up we have Finster, played by the incomparable Robert Axelrod. May he rest in peace. Uh, here is the Finster miniature, I think a great representation of the character. I love that it shows him thinking. Very intricate details, very nice to paint, very small. Uh, I think that's important because Finster's not supposed to be powerful, but you shouldn't be so thinking he's too easy, because Finster is a difficulty of hard. Don't let his small size fool you, Finster is a tough opponent. His abilities can create more trouble for the rangers than they can imagine. Not only can he deploy more foot soldiers to his location, he also does extra damage for said foot soldiers. Always remember, Finster doesn't only make the monsters, he knows how to use them for himself. Uh, this is really true because a lot of his cards really work off of what else is in his location. I kinda wanna isolate Finster in a way. So here's his deployment card. Here's his deck, and that's a little evil grin. Freshly made, health of four, fast, deploy two putty patrollers to this location. Well, that's gonna suck. Crafted cannon, health of four, deal three damage to two different rangers, drain three energy. Dang, Fenster, you aren't playing for nothing. Like, this is crazy. Uh, Arctic Gen sorry, Artistic Genius, not Arctic Genius. Health of five, fast passive. When this card is in play, all foot soldier cards have plus one health. And each time a foot soldier card resolves, even if it's defeated, two, deal two damage. Wow, that hurts. And then kill command. Finster, health of six. Deal three damage, increases damage by one for each foot soldier in this location. It's so like I said, try to isolate this guy because everything will help him. And Finster's just a monster. He's not even a boss. Good job, Jonathan Ying. You really made Finster a formidable foe. <laughs> Next up, we have a classic monster, which was unsure if he'd appear in the game, Eye Guy. Eye Guy is a difficulty of medium. Aware of everything around him, Eye Guy will always know where the rangers will be. Due to this awareness of his surroundings, Eye Guy's attack deal multiple damage to multiple rangers and is a really strong deck killer. Recovering or powering up before facing Eye Guy is advised for the rangers facing down this ocular obstacle. I really do mean it. Eye Guy is really hard to beat. First up, let's look at his miniature. Fantastic work. They said they weren't even sure if they could do it because of the grayscale. They pulled it off. Well done, guys. Well done. I'm, I'm really impressed with this one. Um, also check out look at I guys deployment card well as which is the same art as the back of his cards I should mention that front focused fire health of three deal four damage to the ranger with the fewest cards in their deck that could be a ranger killer scattered visage guard passive while this card is in play each time a ranger deals damage to this card reduce it to one that means that's going to take a while to get rid of optic blast I guy deal two damage to each ranger twice don't ask me why I said I guy there's three of those and Devour Mind, fast. The ranger with the most cards in their hand must discard three cards from their hand. Well, that just sucks, because then you're just like, oh, I got all these cards, and then you don't. And then he kills you, because he's scary. Maybe not kill is the right word, maybe destroyed. He destroys you, because he destroys things. Next up, we have Primator. Difficulty medium. A ranger's worst nightmare is facing themselves in battle, and fighting Primator is the closest that most will come to that nightmare. Primator's ability to mimic other rangers will cause damage where the rangers least expect it. He also is a coward and has very low health, making him an easy target. Primator is pretty dang cool uh, as a concept, but he is not too hard to beat. That being said, that is one of the sturdiest miniatures ever. He is solid, thick plastic. Very nice. I love the fur detail. I love how these look good without paint, but they look even better with paint. So if you do go that extra step, go for it. Deployment card, back of card. 
Let's look at his cards. Mocking Dance, Guard. Two Rangers must each discard one card from their hand. Ooh. Mimicry, four, health of four. One Ranger must discard one random card from their hand. That Ranger suffers damage equal to the number of shields on that card. You need to have the Ranger pick this, but it says random. I would say have another teammate pick from your hand to see what you lose. Um, there's three of those. Also, Electric Thunder, fast. Deal two damage to each Ranger, ouch. And Copy Confusion, passive. While this card is in play, each time a Ranger attacks a Primator card, including this one, deal two damage to lead Ranger. This is a great way to replicate his ability of the Rangers losing track of who's friend and who is foe. You power brats are no match for my team! Next up is Rhino Blaster, difficulty medium. This mismatch of animal themes can be a fearsome foe for the Rangers. Rhino Blaster acts as a glass cannon. His attacks can deal heavy damage at the sacrifice of durability. If Rangers play their cards right, Rhino Blaster can run himself into a wall very quickly. So overall, Rhino Blaster, you know, he is strong, but he's not too strong. Being said, this miniature is amazing. I really do love this one. I love the dynamic action, the pose, the swords there. Just looks fantastic. Give it a nice little turn around there. Looking good for the camera, Rhino Blaster. Of course, we have his deck and his deployment card. So we know that going on. Lightning Horn, the Rangers must divide a total, or sorry, the Rangers must discard a total of four cards divided how they choose. Yeah, basically the team can kind of pick. Everyone could discard one, for example, for a four-person team. Charging Tackle, fast. Deal six damage unless a Ranger discards two cards from their hand to prevent it. It's a pretty avoidable deal six damage as long as you can afford to do that. Three of those. Water Mist Breath, guard. Each time rain, each Ranger must discard one card from their hand. Not too bad to deal with that one. There's only one of them. And Grim Scimitar, uh, fast. Deal five damage. That's going to hurt right up front, but hopefully you should be able to knock out good old Rhino Blaster, and he shouldn't be too bad. Welcome to my pumpkin patch! Perhaps you'd like to play some Kanda! Next up is the Pumpkin Wrapper. He has a difficulty of medium. Now you face the Pumpkin Wrapper. His strong vines are quite the slapper. His health stats are sorta of smaller, but his damage is quite higher. His combo attacks can be scary, unless the Rangers are very wary. Watch out for a pumpkin trap, that way you don't get all wrapped. And really, I can't top that, so we're just gonna look at his cards. Pumpkin Wrapper, first we're gonna look at him. One of my favorite Mighty Morphin Monsters. Super goofy, super silly. Really glad he was in the game. Really nicely detailed miniature. Probably the best looking Pumpkin Wrapper figure on the market. I really like him. I really like him a lot. Here, of course, is his deployment card as well as his deck. And inside here, we have the Wrapper's Trap. Guard and passive. While this card is in play, each time a Ranger attacks this card, they must spend one energy. Yikes. So that, that means sometimes you use a three energy attack, you have to make it four energy. Deal three damage to each ranger for spit hot fire. There's three of those. Rhyme and Vines, deal two damage, deal two damage, deal two damage. Fast. And Hip Hop Bomb Drop. Each ranger must discard their hand from their hand one card with an energy cost of zero. If you don't have an energy cost of zero, you just gotta discard a card. You don't have to discard any cards if you just have all high powered attacks. That's just something that it's not specifically written unless they have no zero cards they have to discard something else but you know there's pumpkin wrapper not too bad to take down but really fun to fight against i am lord zed identify yourself so next up we have the bosses now the bosses are starting off with lord zed once again played by robert axelrod may he rest in peace uh, he is a difficulty of hard lord zed is a villain so fearsome that other evil forces in the universe quiver in fear at the mention of his name Rangers need to be very cautious when going up against this Emperor of Evil, as he can deal damage to the entire team at once. Be incredibly careful of Zet's passive effect causing damage to the Rangers using energy. Yes, that's true. He's quite hard to beat. That's why he's got a big old stand. I think it's a little bit bigger than it needed to be, but it kind of shows that he's more powerful, but still scaling him to other monsters. Really nice work on Zed here. Very nice. They got all the details. They got the staff in the right direction and everything. Pretty stoked about that. Of course, we have his boss deployment card, which that's what the back of the boss cards look like, for those that don't remember. Got that, and his combat deck. Cruel Strike, fast. One ranger must discard the top three cards of their deck. Ouch, right away, you lose cards. Z Lightning, deal 12 damage to fight it among the rangers they choose. That's one of the highest instant damage amounts I have ever seen in this game. Inferno, guard, deal five damage to each ranger. Also hurts. Aura of Doom, passive. While this card is in play, each time a ranger plays a card with energy cost greater than zero, deal two damage to the ranger after the card resolves. This hurts more than Pudgy Pig saying, no, you can't use any energy, because when you do use energy, 
you're gonna lose two damage uh, once the effect goes through. And Darkness Burst, fast. Deal damage to each ranger equal to the number of cards in their hand. Man, you gotta hope that you don't have that many cards when this comes up, because it's fast and you won't even see it coming, so you can't prep for it. It's a health of seven, so yikes. Zed's really strong, Zed's really powerful, but you have to beat him to win the game. So, Putty Patrol, attack the Power Rangers! All right, here is Scorpina. Difficulty, hard. Scorpina may not be well-remembered as she mysteriously vanished, but her attack should not be ignored. Facing Scorpina means facing many high damage attacks with large health stats. It's true, Scorpina actually did get upgraded to boss. I thought she would have been a monster, but I'm so happy she's a boss because she is amazing. Look at this sculpt. This is one of the only, I think this is one of the only Scorpina figures to ever exist. I've never gotten a full-size figure of her, I know that for sure. She might have gotten a minifigure before, but this is really nice. I really do like the way she looks. Nice little painting project too later. Uh, deployment and deck. Deck has Scorpion Strike, Fast Guard, Deal four damage, two, drain two energy. Ah, that hurts. Deadly Stinger, deal five damage to the range of the fewest cards in their deck. Much like Rita, that's a ranger killer. Sorry, a ranger destroyer. Boomerang Blade, fast, passive, deal four damage. After the last Scorpina in this battle resolves, this card has not been defeated, deal four damage. Get this thing out. Knock these out if they're in the combat sequence because they will hurt you so bad at the end. You may not win the game if all your rangers die at the end of the combat sequence, even after defeating enough cards. They made a Sleeping Slash, fast, deal five damage to two different rangers, and fast, deal, sorry, Fainting Slash is fast, deal five damage, skip to the next ranger turn in this battle. So all those pretty much hurt, so be prepared, use your teamwork, knock out Scorpina. Hopefully you got that Megazord to lay down that cover fire. Yes, more! That's exactly what I want you to do! Now we have Wizard of Deception. I want to highlight the fact I think this is the first Wizard of Deception figure to ever exist. He looks fantastic. The way they sculpted the robes is awesome. I love the way they did the head. This is a great, great sculpt, and I'm I'm so happy he got a figure. And he's a boss, because he's really difficult. Difficulty hard. Rangers that enjoy using energy and having a hand of cards will despise the Wizard of Deception. His attacks and passive abilities are very damaging to the Ranger team. Many of his abilities will leave Rangers without energy and without a hand to counterattack. Taking him down will require teamwork and a lot of strategy. I fought this guy in like my second or third game and lost pretty bad. So starting off, cards, and here's his deck. Dark Knowledge. Fast. Each Ranger must draw two cards and then discard two random cards from their hand. Well, that just gets rid of cards. There's three of those. Guard. Deal three damage to each Ranger, drain two energy. Well, that just hurts. Banishment. The lead Ranger must discard their entire hand. Jeez. Shadow Phantasm. Passive. While this card is in play, each time a Ranger defeats a Wizard of Deception card, including this one, they must discard the top two cards of their deck. Wow, what is it? He's got a thing against Rangers, apparently. And lastly, Foul Ritual. Fast passive. At the end of this battle, if the card has not been defeated, deal seven damage to each Ranger. Get rid of this. If you can, nothing else, get rid of this, because seven damage to each Ranger really, really hurts, especially at the end of a battle because you don't have anything to defend against after a certain point. You haven't seen the last of me, you insufferable do good. Our last monster is the one on the box, Goldar. Difficulty, hard. Lord Zed and Reader Repulsa's loyal general, Goldar, will cause the rangers to be on the defense. Goldar's attacks are not only high damage, but also can be augmented by actions performed by the rangers. Goldar is as strong as his appearance, and rangers should come prepared to fight him. He is strong, he is tough, he is one of the hardest bosses in the game, and he looks dang fantastic, look at that. Yeah, has one nice looking Goldar. I really like how big the wings are too. I know some people don't like Goldar with wings. I like Goldar with wings and that, that just looks awesome. I really do like that. Also to this extent, nice card art on both cards here. Grudge, deal two damage, increase that damage for each hit token on Goldar cards, including this one in the battle. So apparently you can't just leave damage hanging around trying to finish it off later. Sword Strike, fast, deal six damage to the lead ranger. Sorry, lead ranger. Two of those. Roaring Slash, guard, deal five damage to two different rangers. Now that just hurts. Vengeful, passive, when this card's in play, each time a Goldar card, including this one, is defeated, deal three damage. Wow. Heat Beam Eyes, fast, deal four damage to each ranger. Hey look, it's the box art. Goldar's really tough, but he is defeatable, so best of luck, rangers. And that concludes all of the things inside the Kickstarter Deluxe Box. <laughs> There's a neat little bonus. There's this Conqueror Rita miniature. Uh, this doesn't change anything in the game. It's just kind of a neat little bonus for Kickstarter things. It's based on her look from Go Go Power Rangers' flashback sequences, which is super cool. I love having physical representations of these different and alternate designs 
Plus, you don't really need any different cards, just use the Rita cards from the base game. But it's a neat little bonus overall. So that's everything in the Kickstarter Deluxe Box Phase 1. This is a ton of stuff. This is all the stretch goals, all the extra stuff, a bunch of Kickstarter exclusives, all these miniatures. Foot soldiers, monsters, bosses, rangers, AI supports, extra cards for your base game, and plastic tokens just as a little uh, dash on top. I'm definitely glad that I was able to go in on the Kickstarter in Phase 1 to do this. Uh, it is available as part of the Phase 2 Kickstarter until October 1st, 2019. If you see this video in time, go check that out. You should be able to add it to any pledge as an add-on. Uh, it was $125 as part of that campaign, and that's definitely worth it because it comes with way more stuff than the base game even comes with. There is a ton of stuff in here. And I'm really impressed. So overall, this is a great thing to expand the game for an infinite number of combinations. And I've really enjoyed a lot of stuff out of this, especially Mighty Morphin White and Rebel Ranger Slayer as playable characters, as well as fighting against Goldar and Pumpkin Rapper. That's just a couple picks that are my personal favorites, but all of these are great, all of these are well-rounded. And having all these foot soldiers is really fun. I especially love the Tangas. So have at it. Best of luck finding this after the fact if you didn't get on any of the Kickstarters. It's really cool. Check your local game stores, talk to your local game stores, see if you can find it on eBay, whatever options you may need. I definitely love this set. I'm super happy it happened, because this is a lot of stuff, and I'm just gonna keep saying that. It's it's a lot of stuff. Like this isn't this I don't have a board game that comes with this much stuff in one box. I just really I don't. So really good stuff, Renegade. Definitely cool. And I hope this video was helpful to you guys. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to see my notes published somewhere, check them out at hero-club.com. I'll be linking it in the description below so you can see what I've written about each character. And also be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Hit subscribe so you keep up to date with future Power Rangers videos as well as more Heroes of the Grid. There's definitely more coming. And leave a comment down below and let me know what you want to see more in this game. Also be sure to check out Ryan RyanDarkClaw643 on Twitter at DarkClaw643. I appreciate all the thumbnails and graphics he's made for the video. Till next time, this is Sanat saying goodbye.